um, for our little postseason press conference with head coach Ezra Hendrickson, and I will be uh, calling on you. So just as a reminder, if you have a question, use your raised hand function and just remind us uh, your name and your outlet. So we will get rolling. Um, Alex Calabrese, let's, let's go ahead and kick it off with you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ezra. Hope you're doing well. I just wanted to ask you about with uh, off-season business presumably coming up, what conversations have you already had with the technical staff regarding what's going to happen in the off-season? And are there any particular areas of the roster that you think need improvement? Yeah, well, um, you know, we've been meeting the past couple of weeks uh, since the season's been over with. Last week, we took a little bit of break, but we've had meetings um, with George and, and Sebastian and Eddie, uh, uh, as, uh, along with my staff, uh, just talking about uh, where are the positions that we can improve on, what, you know, salary cap and all that stuff uh, in, into consideration. What can we do? How can we best improve the squad? And I think we have a a good working understanding of what it is uh, that we, we need to do and where we need to get uh, better at. Obviously, um, uh, goalkeeper with, with Slonina being gone, that's something that we have to make sure that we get right. Uh, we think we have a good uh, player in Brady that, that's, you know, lined up to compete for that spot. But uh, we still want to make sure that we get that right because I think that was a big uh, part of us, you know, having 13 shutouts this year is just having someone back there that can you know, when called upon, um, do the job. Um, uh, right back is is, so, is a place where we need to improve also. And obviously up top, you know, Duran has come on and, and did well uh, for us, but we think uh, get another player uh, that can produce um, goals and and, um, and, and finish uh, chances is something that we, we also need. And there's some other positions that, you know, we, we, we probably need more competition at uh, to, to make sure that uh, the depth is there. But I would say, you know, a striker, uh, a right back and a goalkeeper or something that we, we, we really um, see uh, the need for. And so um, we'll be continuing throughout the offseason trying to improve the team on a whole um, as far as going into next season. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Brian, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hey, Ezra. Uh, thanks for making some time for us this chilly afternoon. Um, just uh, wondering, I, I know that you're watching MLS playoffs right now. What are you seeing in some of those teams that they have that you guys don't and that you guys would need to add to get to that level? Well, I think a lot of it is, is depth, you know. Um, let's take a Montreal, for instance, um, if Kyoto is out, out or he's coming back from injury so he cannot start, then you, you could start a Kai Kamara and, you know, it doesn't really change much, you know. So that ability to be, you know, too deep at each position is something I think uh, a lot of these teams probably have over us right now. And that's why we're trying to um, make sure that we are in a position because each team is going to have injuries throughout the year. But we have to make sure that... Um, because we're not always going to have eat every player on the roster like we did in that five to six game span when we were doing well, you know. Uh, we took some injuries and we kind of fell off uh, when that happened. So we just got to make sure that, you know, we have, you know, uh, people in position uh, that can step in when they're injuries. Um, it also helps with training, being more competitive when, you know, two guys minimum are, are competing for a, a position. Um, and so... We are trying to make sure that we get as deep as possible um, uh, going into next season because we felt like, you know, for 60, 65 minutes in most games, we were uh, in games. Uh, and I think we we fell off towards the end of games. Uh, we want to let ourselves down, you know, sometimes injuries, sometimes just not having to wear it all to finish games out or to chase games. So uh, we are very aware of those positions that we need to to fill. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Jonathan Seagal, go ahead. Hey, Ezra, this is Jonathan from Mossoccer.com. Hope you're doing well. Um, you, you mentioned the need for a striker. I was hoping if you're able to expand upon that. I know there's obviously a DP slot open and in this league, a lot of times that's where energy tends to go. Um, am I trying to connect dots that might not be there? And, and secondarily, how do you look back on Shaq's first year with the club? 
Um, obviously a high profile signing club record signing. Uh, what do you, what did you see from him? What do you need more perhaps going into year two? How can you guys use him? Um, obviously a world cup for him coming up as well. Yeah, well, we, um, you know, the guys in the front office, George and Pelly and Eddie, those guys did a really good job of freeing up a DP spot for us um, going into this offseason. So that was very um, a good job by them. And and so now we have this DP spot and uh, we're looking to fill uh, that uh, spot as a striker and, and getting a proven uh, goal scorer that, you know, that has the numbers that has all, obviously we're going to look at the statistical things uh, as far as his physical abilities, speed, strength, all that stuff, but mainly someone that's a proven goal scorer, someone that, because we think, you know, to get to where we want to get and that's back into the playoffs, we need someone uh, that's a, you know, 12 plus, maybe even 15 plus goal scorer. Um, we think we have that in Duran, but uh, we still have to make sure, you know, because Duran still is just uh, an 18 year old kid that we have someone there that's, you know, uh, that can help his maturation and also that's, you know, putting the ball in the back of that themselves. So we have a very good competition there for that position. Um, and, you know, so that's something that, you know, the DP spot will, will, will most likely go towards. But we're not leaving any stones unturned. You know, we have other positions that we feel like, you know, we we need help also. But that's, that, that's a position that the focus would be on as far as trying to use that DP spot. Uh, as far as Shaq, you know, we thought Shaq uh, did really, really well for us. Um, you know, barring some injuries and stuff, we, you know, he was there uh, game in and game out, you know. Um, but, you know, he's just one person. And you have to have, uh, especially a, a guy like Shaq, who is so good at, at making that final pass and, and dissecting defenses. You you have to have someone at the end of those passes that's going to put the ball in the back of the net. And I think uh, we were lacking that this year. Um, in the first part of the year, especially, uh, we just weren't uh, putting our chances away. And a lot of it was him uh, creating those chances that we weren't putting away. And that could become frustrating at times. But I thought, you know, he was very professional and he was very patient uh, with what was going on with the team. So uh, overall, you know, he's a, he's a great leader for the team. He's helping to bring the young players along really well. And, and we look forward to uh, even a more productive um, year next year from him because, you know, we've all seen what he can do. Uh, when when fit and and when have, have the right tools to to work with. Awesome, thanks, Coach uh, Brian. Well, oh, actually, Alex, we'll go back to you. I know you have to hop off early, so Alex, go ahead. Hi, thank you. Hey, Ezra, I just wanted to ask one more question for you. A lot of the younger players who were training with the team most of the season didn't necessarily get a whole lot of minutes. Are there any in particular that you think could play a bigger role next season? Well, definitely. Um, if we look at Sergio and um, Moniz, uh, we thought these guys were making good strides towards the end of the year. Look at a guy like Kendall Burks. Uh, all of a sudden, he came on very strong when called upon the last uh, couple of games. Uh, we thought he showed well for himself. And these are guys who didn't get to play much at all with the first team during the year, but you know, we we watch their progress in training and we watch their progress uh, in the second team matches. And that's why we weren't shy about putting them on to the pitch when we, we had to. So uh, these are three guys, when you look at um, what they've done this year and the progress they've made that we think, you know, going forward could, you know, help contribute even more next year. And, you know, the other guys are also improving. But if you want to talk about the, the, the three young guys, Obviously, besides the Duran and and the um, Gutierrez, we know those guys have made the strides, and those guys, you know, are first team uh, players. But as far as younger players who mainly played with the second team, I think those three guys uh, have shown really, really well um, this year. Awesome. All right, Brian, back to you now. Um, you, you've mentioned uh, Georg and Seb Sebastian a couple times today, um, and. Uh, ha are, have you been told whether they indeed will be back this off season and will be the ones uh, running the team this off season? I have not been told either way, but as far as I know, the, you know they are. Um, I think these guys um, have been here and, and have done a good job. So uh, until I'm told otherwise, uh, that's you know these are the guys that I lean upon to to get players in here so we can get this team back to um, where where it belongs. Um, 
So I, that's stuff I don't really concern myself with as far as uh, what the timeline is, uh, so to speak, with with those guys. Um, but uh, I have, you know, worked really well with them and, and they are willing to, you know, do what it takes to bring in the right players uh, to get this thing uh, where we, we need it to be. Um, and I think uh, if, if I look forward to next year, it's it's, it's playoff. You know, it, it, it playoff is a must. Um, I think we have to do what it takes to get this team back into the playoffs. Um, even uh, this year, you know, the beginning year of, of trying to rebuild this thing, we've shown at times that uh, we can, you know, play with the top teams and we can, you know, really, really compete and be in the playoffs. But uh, we just not quite there yet. And I think with these guys' help, we'll get the right players in here to get this team back to to, to where we belong. Because uh, even a little shorthanded at times this year, the football that we played at times, you know, you can say it was very, very, very good. It was very uh, playoff worthy, you know, and some of the teams that we've we beat, you know, yeah, Seattle, you know, who wasn't didn't make the playoffs, but still is a, a on any given day a very competitive team, you know, uh, beating Philly and stuff like that, who you know many a pick to to win it all this year. So we've shown at times that uh, we're on the right track, and I think if we continue to to build like this and get the right uh, complementary players, uh, a couple of starters in some position in here, we will get back to the playoffs um, next season. Brian, did you have a follow-up? I do. I, it's not really about that, but uh, you mentioned uh, right back and striker as two places that uh, you guys will look to address this offseason. So um, that leads me to think about Casper and uh, Boris. Um, with Casper, what went wrong for him? And is it possible that maybe just the change of scenery would be better for him? And then uh, what's the thought process with Boris for uh, next season? Well, I think Casper struggled with some uh, injury issues this year. Um, never, I don't think he was ever really fully uh, fit physically as far as, you know, uh, injury-free. And I know uh, most players don't play injury-free, but uh, for the most part, uh, I think he was bothered by, you know, whatever injuries uh, he was carrying, maybe at the back or the foot or whatever. So he never really, you know, got going. Uh, and we, we expected him uh, to, to to produce a lot more than he did this year. So um, that's some that's an area that we feel like we need to, you know, uh, get some, you know, like I said, competition in here, get some players in here that uh, is going to put the ball away for us. Um as far as Boris, uh, he's in his last year of his contract, um, and that's another area where we feel we can also improve um, there. But, you know, these guys uh, are players. Casper uh, is uh, still on the contract. Um, so we, we are just trying to make this team better and not um, sort of pointing out uh, any particular player as far as uh, – whether or not we like that player, but um, whatever it's going to take to improve this team is what we're going to do because at the end of the day, we owe it to our fans. We owe it to the owner to get the best uh, quality guys in here and uh, form the best team so that when we step out on the pitch, we know that you know we are at, at full strength and we're uh, as competitive as possible uh, on that given day. And that's how you get into the playoffs, You know, being able to compete uh, game in on game out, you know, not for five games at a time and then going to allow for five. So the more competition we can have at the position, the more people we have competing for uh, to get on the pitch uh, come Saturday nights, uh, the better the team will be and the stronger the team will be and the, the training session will be more competitive. You know, one of the things we always tell the players is we, we, we train the way we play. We play the way we train, you know. So if these training sessions can be more competitive and guys are more competing more for positions, I think the team as a whole will be better. So that's what we're trying to do when we talk about positions of need. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Jonathan, we'll go back to you. Sure. Hey, um, obviously Gaga's leaving. You mentioned Chris Brady in one of your opening remarks. Um, I don't expect you here on, what is it, October 17th to hand the starters shirt to, to Chris, but obviously there's some buzz and excitement around him. Um, how do you view that situation? Can you expand, if at all, on how that goalkeeper battle um, might look of kind of one, let's call it U U.S. Youth International going out, uh, one stepping into his shoes, perhaps. Well, I think Brady showed us uh, on the last game that, you know, he's a player that 
when called upon, uh, can do the job. And you have to have someone back there that's uh, keep the balls out of the back of the net. Um, I think the way we defend as a team, we're a very organized team. Hence, we had, you know, you're not making the playoffs and still having 13 shutouts. Uh, some of that was Gaga's doing, but a lot of it is uh, our team defending. Uh, we weren't getting broken, broken down by teams uh, very easily. Now we have to continue that. And with a, another young uh, keeper uh, in a goal, um, that has to continue as a team, as far as our team defending. But as I said previously, every position, there will be competition. So it's not a position that we're just going to hand to Brady. Uh, if you ask me now, I'd say, yes, he's the front runner to take over the reins. But we know that, you know, competition needs to be there. And he'll get that from Richie. He'll get that from whoever else uh, keeper that we have here. But, uh, you know, the kid has shown that, you know, he's ready to step in and, and take the reins. But it's just not going to be handed to him. We're going to make sure that uh, he's competing for it because we don't at any means or any time want players to be complacent and thinking that, you know, the job is just theirs. Uh, there's always going to be competition. And that's how we think we're going to get this team to be better at every position, minimum two players uh, competing at a, at a similar level for the position, not uh, a big drop off from player one to player two, uh, because that, you know, can also cause you games, you know, late in games when uh, you feel like you don't really um, maybe trust the, the, the player, the, the alternative, or, you know, sometimes we have three games in eight days and, uh, instead of running the same guy out for three games, th there's a player, a backup that you trust to put in that 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 middle game of the of the three. So, just trying to get this team as competitive as possible is is the focus, and it's the same in every position, including goalkeeper position. But Brady has shown that you know he can step on the pitch. Thanks for that. And just one more for me would be it's trust. You have to say that Jairo Torres year one did not go how I'm sure he hoped or any of the folks running the Chicago Fire hoped. But what does year two have in store? Um, what type of player could we see in MLS? Because there is a lot of expectation coming from a great Atlas team. Uh, and I know he's coming off uh, a surgery, if I'm not mistaken, should be back hopefully for preseason. Um, just help people, especially at a national level, understand like, hey, we didn't see what we thought, but maybe there's more in 23. Well, yeah, definitely. I think that's another player that we had that was uh, hampered by injury. Um, I think he never really got to show us, you know, what what he can. And I think a lot of people are going to be surprised once he's recovered and he's back on the pitch playing. You know, at times, you know, we saw a little glimpse of of the player that we brought in. You know, I can remember specifically the, the um, Toronto game, uh, one of his first starts. Um, and you know, for 60, 65 minutes that he was on the pitch, you know, we saw the tours that we, we expected, you know. And, you know, if you remember, we had we were in very good command of that game. Uh, he even scored a goal that got taken back, that got called back uh, by VAR that game. And then he had to come out because, you know, with the injury, it just, he couldn't do, uh, go longer. But we, we've seen, and in other games, where, you know, this player can be a very, very good player for us. Uh, he fits our system really well. And we just hope that, you know, going into next season, we have him at full strength because I think he'll surprise a lot of people who maybe still have doubts or maybe, who don't really see what we saw uh, uh, before we bring him, uh, bring him in to the, the squad. All righty, Brian, we'll wrap it up with you. Last question. Sure. I'm um, just wondering if there's uh, any updates on any uh, on the guys who uh, underwent surgery, whether it's Hyro, Gaston, Andre, or uh, Wyatt, or anybody else. Just how everybody's doing, and if there's any possibility for any other off-season procedures for other players. Well, uh, as of now, uh, everyone is, um, you know, healing well. Um, some are going to take a little longer than others. Uh, but um, so far, everyone is, uh, I think, on the right track, uh, on the right uh, timeline as far as returning. Um, we will do uh, year-end physicals after we train these next couple of weeks. And uh, if any player needs surgery or needs further work um that will be determined but, but as of right now you know until we do those year in physicals um we we can't really say if anyone else will need surgery uh hopefully not but um you know how these things goes we do have a couple more weeks of training here and we'll see how we get out of those two weeks oh hi larry uh i saw you raise your hand we'll give you one question here go ahead 
Hey, Ezra, thanks for doing this. Um, I have a question uh, kind of more generally coming in as a first time manager for the club. You, you want to establish ways of doing things, establish culture. Uh, how much do you believe you did that this year? And, and how do you feel about the team's culture and kind of your system moving forward now to year two? Well, I think, you know, as a first year coach, I learned a lot of things. Um, I think we get in the culture uh, in the right direction. Um, I think if you look at the team, uh, going through those 10 games without winning the game. Um, if you look at that Columbus match, you know, after we coming out of that 10 game and then playing so well for 60, 65 minutes against that Columbus team um, and then failing in the second half like that, uh, a team that, that doesn't have a good culture, that's, that, that's not, you know, cohesive, could have easily folded. But I think we showed some um, resilience. We showed some team chemistry. We showed some fight that we were able to, after that game, go on a nice uh, run of games where uh, we just bond together as a team and, 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 and did what, you know, we set out to do from the, from the start of the season. So I think in that aspect, you know, keeping a cohesive group, a group that's uh, believing in each other, a group that's believing in what it is that you're doing, uh, we were very good at doing that. Now, part of creating a, a good, strong culture is winning. And so that's the part now that we need to um, improve on uh, because, you know, when you win, that, that culture of the team you know, also improves and you, you can get even more buy-in to, you know, to all of the guys. But uh, so if I look back at this year, uh, I see some success. I see some progress, which has helped uh, change uh, the culture of the team because, you know, it's, it's, it's been a few years since this team has made the playoffs. So I can see how it'll be easy to, you know, uh, here we go again. But I think the way we finished the season um, and even when we were out of it or needed points, you know, going into New England and going to Columbus and getting ties, you know, the guys just never gave up, you know, going into uh, Montreal, so uh, shorthanded and, you know, playing them in a really, really good game, you know, end up losing the game 3-2. Uh, uh, they had some, you know, some some goals that, you know, we, we could have avoided. But uh, as a team and, and the growth of the culture and the team as a whole, I think it's been really good this year. Um, we've shown some progress. Uh, we've shown that we, we're on the right track to where we're trying to be. So, um, I would say that, you know, it, things are looking up uh, rather than looking downwards. Um, had we finished this uh, season on a 10-game losing streak, then uh, I would say different. But I think the way we finished the game, even though the points weren't there enough to get into the playoffs, um, we, we've shown a lot of progress. And, and I like the direction in which this team is going. And you see the young players such as the Guti and the, and the Duran get an opportunity to get on the pitch and, and show uh, what the future holds for the squad. So uh, I'm excited about going into the second year and, and, and I know that this team will continue to grow. Thank you. Uh, awesome. Good positive message to end up on. So thank you everyone for joining us. Thanks coach. And we will end it there. Thanks guys. Thank you, Ezra.